um, I don't know. I I've, I've been pretty fucking mad about some of this news. I'm not going to lie. Um, but we're going to start off with something absolutely. Well, that's good. That is very good news. Please don't, please, please don't become a koofer. I don't want, I want no, no koofers in chat. Um, let me just get some of this shit ready because you know what? Let's, let's look into this. We're going to start this with something surprisingly lighthearted. I mean, it's horrifying, but it's so funny. You, you just can't, you just can't do, you just can't, you just can't argue with it. It's so fucking funny. Here, let me just give you guys an idea. This is the summary. You guys have probably seen my meme. I did post it online. You know this meme, right? You guys saw this meme. Look, it did good. People even retweet it and shit. Elon Musk, my son, XAEA12, you must drive the Cybertruck. Yo, hey, Aris Shrugged. Good to see you all here this morning. Good to see you all. Oh, my God. All right, so... So, last... So, yesterday... Let's get the basics of what happened yesterday. Yesterday, I started seeing all these pictures all over the place. There were all these these schlubby looking motherfuckers being arrested by uh, by a bunch of, of very serious looking people in military uniforms. And it was like, oh, this just happened in, in Venezuela. And I'm like, oh, like what the fuck happened in Venezuela? G God damn, man, shit's been really bad there this entire year. We've been really fucking around a lot down there. And then I read the actual headline, which is U.S. mercenaries arrested in Caracas. And I was just like, I was really high, to be quite honest, when I first came across it. And I was just like, is this a, is this a joke? Is this an op? What is this? But no, no, it's just America doing its, its, its typical, usual interventionism in the world in the most clownish an embarrassingly way you can imagine. So I made this this meme inspired by that, um, which you all can see here. And if you really like it, you can you can click on it here. But you can enjoy when you accidentally forget to pay your coup squad, and so they run out of food and have to flee their secret hideout to be immediately arrested with identifying documents. Um. <laughs> wait, let's see. The Norns were gonna fate you to have an ML Dami mommy, but she was killed in a U.S. back coup. Yeah, coup. Yeah, that would be that would be not good. Yeah. That would that would not be good. You don't want no nobody no no mommies dying from coups. We don't like that shit here. I'm gonna show you something, and then we're gonna dive into this a little more because I think that the um, I think there's something to be understood here that a lot of people tend to forget. Let me just bring up a real real quick. Let me just bring up a a little. Where the fuck is my? Where the fuck did it go here? I know I have it in my bookmarks. Let me bring it up on here. Here it is. Look at this great image. This is a really amazing image because I, I love shit like this. I love little infographics that talk about real shit. Um, this is the 56 U U.S. military inventions in Latin America. Now, let's see. What's the earliest one on here? The earliest one on here is 1954. Now, keep in mind, we have had a lot more interventions. As, as many of you will have known from my um, argument with somebody in chat... Um, we watched a segment of Radical Reviewer's really fantastic video about this, which I will provide a link to real quick. Yeah, here we go. Here's Radical Reviewer. And I'm going to give you a really fucking fantastic video if you guys want to see the, the details that go into making an infographic like this. Uh, where's the fucking video? Here we go. The history of U.S. invading America. Bam. If any of you want to watch this, there is the link. You can watch it later after this stream, and it will be really amazing because you will start to understand what the fuck this is talking about, um, like on an actual factual level, because this is just a nice, convenient graphic. On this graphic, we have in the red circle the number of U.S. military invention interventions since 1890. Okay, so this one does go back to 1890. Um, this picture right here where you see these symbols, U.S. troops are currently on the ground, and then wherever you see a tank image... Um, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we just did that though. I mean, we, we just did that. Like that just happened. This whole story, which we're about to get into is exactly that. It is precisely an invasion. It is an absolute invasion. Um, and anyway, you have these tanks here and you can see where we have currently active military bases, um, including troops. So we have a whole bunch of bases all over Latin America and we have a whole bunch of troops on the ground. You can see we got one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight 
active troop locations and one, two, three, four major bases that include troops. The number of interventions you can see in these circles. Oh, wow. We got a fucking, we got six in Cuba. We got four in Haiti, two in Puerto Rico, which is our, which is a fucking colony of ours and, uh, and wants to, and has for a long time been debating whether to become a state because, uh, as a colony, they get subpar treatment but as a state they would have even they would likely receive subpar treatment and have responsibilities uh that they would owe to the u.s government so it's a big question if you're ever wondering why it's such a big deal and why the votes for the last like 100 years on whether per puerto rico wants to become a state or not is like a big controversial issue it's because uh puerto rico has traditionally been abandoned by the united states government and they also don't want to owe stuff to the united states government while being abandoned to the United States government, or by the United States government. We have eight here in Honduras. We have eight here in Nicaragua. Um, oh, and look, they even have some details. We got, let's see, let's see. Let's take a look at what happened in Guatemala. CIA directs bombing, invasion, and coup after newly elected government nationalizes un, um, United, oh, United Fruit Company lands, um, killing killings of over 200,000 here, here in, uh, this was in Guatemala. In Cuba, we have the CIA leads the Bay of, Bay of Pigs invasion um, to the People Revolution, but are defeated by the Cuban people. Uh, we fucked that up so unbelievably, like, I say we, but I mean the United States. The United States fucked this up so incredibly bad that it's, like, considered one of the most embarrassing events in, in U.S. history, um, U.S. military history. Uh, here in Honduras, we have eight interventions. U.S.-backed coup removes democratically elected president. We've got one of those going on in... Um, in uh, Bolivia right now, which we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about that a bit later. I like to call this, uh, Otonono Aji says, I like to call this Shaden freedom. We declare other countries, um, well, we declare maybe war on other countries while saying we're the freest. Meanwhile, delighting in our ability to make people quote unquote more free. And by more free, I mean wage slaves, just like us. 4% of the world's population, but 22% of the prison population. And everybody should be free, just like us. I know exactly how you feel on that. Yeah, isn't that kind of bullshit? Isn't that kind of insane? Um, we export freedom, TM. We we go and we upset um, governments that are trying to uh, address like local issues. This is most apparent in our intervention, um, in our intervention in in Latin America is us going in and finding governments that are doing what they you know sometimes imperfectly, sometimes horrifically. We have all, there's all kinds of fucking historical precedent in Latin America. We have upturned every single type of country you can imagine from completely peaceful, functional governments that are doing great for their people to um, dictatorships, often which were the result of us upturning a previous peaceful and successful government. We've basically just, it, you know that game, what's that game? Um, fuck, now I can't think of it. Uh, the one where it like, all the pieces get blown up every couple minutes by the little fucking timer and you have to put them into the holes real quick before it pops up. I don't fucking remember what it's called. Anyway, that's what we do to Latin America. That's what we've done to Latin America for the last 100 years. Um, and this is just the latest one. This nonsense is just the latest one. So let's get into that. Let's talk about what actually happened. Um, what I have here is, let's take a look. Uh, here is the story from a Bolivian journalist. And I want to read about this because... It's pretty fucking... Wait, this is not the one. Sorry. I, I grabbed the wrong one. I didn't mean to say Bolivian. Um, I have here... Where the fuck did I go? Here we go. No, that's not the right one. Now oh, that's the same person, but... Uh, why am I... I put these all aside. Why did I get them all, all the links mixed up? Here we go. This is where... This is the first thread that I was able to read and get all the details on. So, here's an image we have right here. Yeah, it kind of is in a lot of ways. Yep. Um, we, we treat Latin America very much in the same way the European colonial powers, uh, treated Africa. Um, it's, it's a, it, apparently, you know, in the eyes of our government it is a region that is just for, you know, essentially unfettered exploitation. Anyway, here's a picture of captured U.S. mercenaries, Luke Alexander Denman and Aaron Barry, who are in custody of the Venezuelan government. The two silver corp terrorists claim work, claim to work security for president Trump. Um, so you can see two of them here and some of their, um, compatriots down here who were unidentified, um, at the time of this, this posting down here, we can see Nicolas Maduro, um, confirming the capture of U S citizen silver corp mercenaries. Silver corp is a U S security firm, AKA you hire people 
who have guns and are strong and maybe have grenades and who knows what else. Um, and uh, they do work for you. Um, so we have a whole bunch of these companies. You may have heard of one called uh, Blackwater uh, back in the uh, back when we were talking about the Iraq War. Remember that, guys? Remember Blackwater? Remember all that shit? Well, guess what? We still have a whole bunch of these. Um, we have a whole bunch of these mercenary or, um, organizations um, that still operate as quote unquote legitimate businesses within our country. And as we have now learned, many of them are in the employ of our own government. So uh, we have them going over this. Well, here's where it gets really weird. This is what started to call like, like stand out to me. And I was like, what the fuck is going on here? Which is that uh, they have all their IDs on them. They got caught with IDs, with with fucking fucking veterans benefits cards, with their VA cards. They got caught with uh, like orders. They got caught with all their equipment, their supplies. They got completely caught with everything, which to me, that made me go, hmm, that's a little weird. It's a little weird that these um, that these like dark dark money mercenaries who are working for the for the uh, United States of America would get caught with all their ad identification on it. You know, that seems like something that you would do if you were, I don't know, trying to set something up. But then, but then, there's more information. <laughs> this is how the members of the eight-man Operation G Gedeon terror cell went down today in Chuao, Aragua State, in a civic military police takedown led by local fishermen. So they got caught by local fishermen. Yeah, this is complete amateur hour. These people got caught by local fishermen. So people were like, why the fuck are these people hanging out in a boat with a whole bunch of guns? And the local fishermen called the fucking police. Um, and the local fishermen were like heckling them and, and telling them not to land until the police could show up. People saying that mercenaries don't carry passports and IDs. Their associate Jordan, another person at Silver Corp, just said yesterday that they haven't seen a penny promised. These guys were sleeping in a Colombian cemetery in dire conditions. Should they have left for Venezuela, leaving all their items in a Colombian jungle ditch? So now, now we get more. We can get more information into this, which is where this story comes in, which I'm about to read here. We're gonna read a little story about this. Um, Venezuela says two Americans among those nabbed after a failed beach raid. We'll go through this, but now you get the idea, right? So the U.S. government was not paying its own mercenaries and they were running out of food, which resulted in them having to break camp where they were hiding in Colombia. They were hiding in Colombia with food, waiting for supplies, waiting for communication. Um, and in fact, I think in this article, they talk about how um, <laughs> they were there talking about how they were waiting for like a boat. They were waiting for a rendezvous with a boat that was supposed to get them supplies, but they ran out of fucking food. So these these mercenaries that we want that were given, by the way, they were they they admitted to being given direct orders to go to go into Venezuela and assist training people so that they could um, oust Maduro. Their express goal was to get up a bunch of people who were loyal, storm the uh, storm the uh, the capital, and capture Maduro. We'll get into this in this article here in a second. So they were sent in to do that. Never got paid, ran out of food, and out of desperation said, shit, we need to go try and find, we need to try and find some food in Venezuela and move forward with our schedule. They got immediately caught. <laughs> yeah, they don't, they should have known by now that the Trump admin doesn't pay contractors. This is the thing. It's so funny that some of these things come out, like they work out so Literally, it, it's amazing because back in 2016, I was talking to people like one of the talking points that people would talk about was how Trump's like Trump's history with his business deals has been one of exploitation. He never fucking pays anybody. He's literally been known for just uh, for like hiring people to do like an incredible amount of work and then declaring bankruptcy in, in order to avoid ever having paid them in the first place. It's incredible. It's incredible how, like, it's like, it's like, it's like poetry, you know, like George Lucas. It's poetry. It mine. It, it rhymes. Under the Thunder says, Americans are actually utterly, amazingly incompetent. We just throw money and manpower at everything until something we like happens and assume we're too powerful to face the consequences. I hadn't seen it yet, but I will. Uh, just, just be patient. Be patient. Don't worry. Um, 
let's see here. Yeah, so let's read this article real quick because I want to get into the, the, the nitty gritty details of this of this fucking hilarious story. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro said authorities arrested two U.S. citizens among a group of mercenaries on Monday, a day after a beach raid purportedly aimed at capturing the socialist leader um, that the authorities say that they foiled. So this is the part. This is the um, the, the beach raid was when they realized we need to go forward um, because we are out of supplies and our boat isn't coming and we haven't been paid. So they said, all right, we're going to go make a beach landing. Now, it's hard to say whether they were planning on immediately. I mean, it, it looks like from the video that they pretty much knew they were fucked because they showed up and basically just put their hands up the minute they got confronted by fishermen. Um which is, makes this even funnier. Maduro held up a pair of blue U.S. passports, reading off the names and birth dates of them in a nationwide broadcast on state television. He showed the images of fishing of the fishing boats the alleged attackers rode in on and equipment like walkie-talkies and night vision glasses collected in what Maduro called an intense couple of days. He blamed the attacks on the Trump administration and neighboring Colombia, both of which have denied involvement. Oh, yeah, yeah, Donald Trump today... Um, just straight up lied. We know that these guys were working for the U.S. now. This has been confirmed through multiple um, multiple avenues. And Donald Trump was just like, I don't know the guys. I don't fucking know them. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you want me to like... I don't know how to do that. How do I do that? Uh, I don't know. We'll need a... Um, I need a mod. I don't know. Uh, I can't do it from this view. So a mod can delete the animated emote. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Or we can do this. Here, let's push it upwards. Boop. Here, everybody just spam Yodas in chat. Or 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 rats or or Keres. Do do a kind. Do a kindness. Um Let's keep going here. Before dawn on Sunday, officials say the first attack started on a beach near Venezuela's port city of La Guaria, where when Security forces made the first two arrests and killed eight others attempting to make a landing by speedboats. So it wasn't just these two guys. These were just the two who were carrying their IDs on them and who were like the U.S. like um, special forces guys. I think one of them was like a Green Beret. Um, and and I think I don't know if they mentioned it in this article, but he was supposed to like, um, yeah, he was supposed to like uh, train other people to help them. Yay. Yeah. Yay, look at that emote spam. Get the spam in there. We love the spam. Um, Venezuela has been in a deepening political and economic crisis under Maduro's rule. Crumbling public services such as running water, electricity, and medical care have driven nearly 5 million to migrate. Keep in mind that these, um, crumbling public services, we have been, like, brutally, um, uh, embargoing, like, uh, like, uh, sanctioning them, um, on a, uh, on, on an international level. We've been basically, uh, calling all of our allies to, to sanction economically sanction the shit out of Venezuela, which is like what, what that does is, uh, it, for anybody who doesn't understand how sanctions work, um, it's, it's sanctions almost always punish the people of the country because we basically fuck their economy, ensuring that the poorest people in their country are suffering the most and are most likely to rise up and overthrow the government out of necessity. We've done this over and over and over again throughout time. Hey, thank you for the follow. Woo, thank you, Labor Kyle. Holy shit, thank you so much. Oh my God, Labor Kyle is amazing. You guys, hold on. Let me just link Labor Kyle's YouTube channel. You guys should follow, you guys should follow Labor Kyle. He does such good content, so much good shit. And he had a conversation with Zan Z recently that was phenomenal. Let me just get you guys this, um, this link. Thank you so much for the raid, Labor Kyle. Yeah, I'm so excited. This is going to be great. We're talking about fucking crazy shit. I think your audience will find this really fascinating. Yay, thank you for the follows. Um, Hell yeah. Oh, good. And look, we successfully got the animated emote that was accidentally put in there um, out of the way. <laughs> yeah, Labor Kyle, you're amazing. Yes, this is the fisherman story. This is the story about the, uh, the fisherman stopping the... Um, Stopping the fucking uh, mercenaries. They basically, th these mercenaries were like starving. Like literally, they were like living in in a, uh, like an abandoned cemetery. And they were like eating shitty rations. They hadn't been paid. They were supposed to get like, uh, I think a boat was supposed, like a military boat or a, um, a like well-equipped boat was supposed to rendezvous with them and give them all kinds of equipment and shit and get them set up to go into Venezuela and, um like work up fervor for a coup, they fucking failed. 
Yes, yes, these are the wannabe Jack Ryans. Yeah, these are the people who are like, these are the, these are the, these are the, these are the operators, right? Yeah, eat shit, shit, Jack, Jack Ryan dorks. Yeah, this is, this is, there was a, oh my god, I wish I could find the fucking picture. Here we go. Jack Ryan. This is what the CIA thinks they are. This is what the CIA thinks they are. They think they're a gym, gym office gym with a with a suit and looking all badass, like with an explosion behind him. There you go. This is what the CIA thinks of themselves. And then this, where'd the where'd the fucking picture go? Where'd my picture go? There we go. This is the reality. This right here is the reality. This is the reality. Oops, that's loud. This is the reality. That's what the CIA actually looks like right there. Gym office. Jim office covered in his own fucking sweat and shit and piss, uh, getting embarrassed on a national scale, never to get work again. These people are so fucked because keep in mind, like when you're a mercenary and, uh, and you're not paid, like, uh, and, and then you decide to go rogue like, like this and do something silly. Like the people who were supposed to pay you aren't going to pay you. And you're certainly not going to get, uh, like mercy from the government that you were trying to overthrow. These people are fucked. These guys are fucked. Can you imagine, like, can you imagine going in, like, like, first of all, you know the type of people who, who go and fucking work for, uh, a, a, a fucking mercenary firm and are like, yeah, you know what? I'm okay with accepting a contract that has me, um, you know, overturning an, a, a foreign government. Yeah. These are the type of people who, these are the same type of people who are doing the fucking reopen protests. The same type of people who are out there screaming, I am immune compromised, but I am out here because I believe in American freedom. <coughs> same people, same motherfuckers, same fucking personality type. These guys got in here all gung ho and they're like, Oh, we're going to go. You're going to go spread American patriotism immediately owned instantly fucking owned after like sitting and sweating in a in in like a in a fucking jungle cemetery for a week these motherfuckers were like oh oh shit and immediately got owned by unarmed fishermen just imagine that just fucking imagine that imagine how embarrassing and sad of a life you must live to think you're like to think your fucking gym office with his little cool clippy shit and his gun and his explosion and his his, his stern look on his face but in reality you're just a schlub you're just a schlub getting owned by a, by a government that you were hoping to hoping pathetically to overthrow. Yup. So let's keep reading because I want I want you guys to understand the details of this. It's so it just keeps getting better. So this they leave out here. They say you know Venezuela has been uh, in a a worsening um, political and economic crisis because of us because of our actions. We've been stirring shit um, in in Venezuela for like six. I mean, obviously way more than that, but I mean, in this particular thing, it's been like over a year now, I think that we've been fucking with them and trying to push this Guaido idiot. Who's literally just like some fucking friend of Donald Trump, um, a friend of a friend of Donald Trump's who's just some dumb schlub who knows nothing about running a country who knows nothing about fucking a coup, especially he's failed over and over and over again. Every single attempt the United States has made to overturn this shit has fucking failed because believe it or not, um, we're not, we're pretty clownish even at our best, but we are especially stupid when we have, uh, when we're dealing with Donald Trump and the, the way that the Donald Trump's like, uh, policy, um, what, what's the right word here? Uh, foreign policy, um, international approach has been slipping on a banana peel and accidentally crushing a completely innocent nation. Like, Whoops, I fell. Crunch. We're going to crush Iran. Uh we're going to slip. Oops, we're going to crush a, a, two random countries in 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 uh, South America. That's been the story of our of our foreign policy under Donald Trump. You can look at it again and again and again. It's just we fucking Donald Trump threw out the Iran deal. One of the most like unbelievable like how the fuck did this happen? Incredible works of diplomacy to attempt to defuse a, a situation that has been incredibly tense and has had a shit ton of wrongdoing all around. Incredibly, like it, like untying the Gordian knot level of difficulty. So many fucking um, diplomats put their life and soul into making this shit happen. And then Donald Trump didn't like it because it was Obama who did it. And so he just fucking chucked it out the window. Can, can you fucking imagine that? Can you imagine if you like, imagine if you'd had like a feud with your neighbor for like 20 years and you guys were like, like fucking 
throwing bricks through each other's windows and all kinds of shit. And then your kids were like, hey, uh, let's try and work this shit out. We really can't be chucking shit in each other's windows. I mean, of course, this isn't a perfect analogy because it was mostly us doing this shit chucking. We're like, we're, inc we're like this fucking big and Iran is like this big in terms of military power. But regardless... All, everybody gets together, it comes together, and it takes like fucking like a year of solid talking of just like, hey, can we work out our differences so that people can stop suffering? And then fucking Donald Trump comes in and just tears the shit up because that is exactly, that is exactly what just fucking happened is some, some fucking blundering oaf uh, happened his way into the White House and just tears up one of the most incredible and like hard work infused deals that we've worked out in recent memory. So the Navy of Venezuela who had a military ship sunk by a cruise ship caught, caught, caught these guys. Was it confirmed news? Yes. This has been widely reported. Um, and it was not actually, it was not actually the Navy that caught them. They were, st um, they were starving. They were like running out of food and shit, um, hiding in Colombia, um, who has much better relations with the United States much better as in, you know, we have them in a neck hold. Um, so they were hiding out in Colombia, ran out of supplies because they were never paid and their rendezvous was late, just not showing up. And so they decided, okay, well, we have to move somewhere else. And so they tried to make beach fall in, or, or they tried to make landfall from their shitty boats that they had. They're like disguise boats and whatnot. They just literally had like shitty fishing boats. They got on those and they tried to make landfall and got caught by a bunch of farmers. Like, I mean, not farmers, fishermen. The fishermen were like, what the fuck is going on here? Hey, what the fuck are these people doing? Those guys got guns. And then the local police came. And then finally, you know, the federal people came. Uh, we've got, let's see, the number, the amount of reporting. I don't know. Let's, let's find out. I mean, right now we're going to read this story. This is by Globe and Mail, which is a Canadian organization. There was extensive reporting. Um, this story was done by... Um, by a Venezuelan, um, a Venezuelan reporter, um, which has been, uh, which has been supported by a lot of, um, U.S. reporters. Like, again, I've seen this story re-reported a whole bunch. I'm just going to where the stuff that I was watching as it came, as it unfolded in real time and what stories I've seen since then. So yeah, when you're trying to get some exposure for your hotel chains and it accidentally become president. Yeah, like it's it's the steak salesman shit, right? Like Donald Trump is a steak salesman. He doesn't he he doesn't want to, nor is he good at um dealing with fucking uh like like regime change or war. I mean, we're seeing this here in the United States. He doesn't want to deal with coronavirus. He doesn't want to even think about it. He wants to go golf, and then he wants to get into catty disagreements with fucking random journalists that he doesn't like, and he wants to go, you stink, you're bad, you smell. That's it. That's what he wants to do all day, every day. He wants to be a retired, old, rich, catty guy, and he just wants to have all the prestige that he can. But here's the thing. When you're president, you have to deal with all kinds of shit, none of which he is competent or capable of dealing with. Yeah, I wish they had gotten sticks at Hexenhammer. Wouldn't that be fucking funny? Wouldn't that be funny just to see him in this lineup? We'll talk about him maybe a little bit later. First is tragedy, Bay of Pigs. Second is farce. Or in our case, uh, first as first as farce, always as farce. Everything that we've that we've all of our interventionism is almost always just incredibly haphazard farce. Uh, let's see. This is the person, this is Goudreau. This is the person who um, is, works for, I believe this is the person who works for, um, let me see. Let me just make sure I got this right. Yeah, Jordan Goudreau um, is, uh, it works for Silver, Silver Corp. So this ex-Green Beret, Jordan Goudreau, is, is like one of their American contacts um, who is working with them, intending, and this was, this is it right here. Uh, Florida-based ex-Green Beret Jordan Goudreau said earlier Monday that he was working with the two men in a mission intending to detain Maduro and liberate Venezuela. Goudreau has claimed responsibility for the operation. You see, this is the thing. When, 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 when there is complete, like, okay, this is, this is the thing with conspiracies, right? Because, like, 
the reason why like these big like ideas of puppeteers and shit just don't hold together is because they break down the further away from like the the the, the cabal of people who are supposedly like pulling all the strings which there are people who attempt to pull strings this is why I say, like, we live in the age of fail sons, where all the fail sons have the levers of power, but they don't, they can't fucking do anything with them because they're not ruth, they're, they're they're literally not ruthless enough to play the type of game that you would have seen back in the era of the robber barons. But they just like yanking it around, and it does all kinds of shit. The 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 impact of that is that there are all kinds of breakdowns within these operations. Gudro. He doesn't want to get in, ch in trouble for this. He's just doing his job. So of course he's going to of course he's going to squeal. Of course every single one of the mercenaries is going to squeal. It makes perfect sense. They've not been paid. They've been caught by a foreign for, uh, foreign government. Of course they're going to squeal. They'll tell everything and they are. Bye Carl Bo Bye Carl Borks. Thanks for coming by. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Let me get this done and then I'll um I'll tell you what what I want to do. Um let me finish this segment and I'll tell you what, what I want to do. So Kay Denman, the mother of one of the Americans, said the last time she heard from her son was a few weeks when he texted her from an undisclosed location to ask how she was coping with the coronavirus pandemic. She said she'd never heard her son discuss Venezuela and only learned of his possible capture there after his friends called when they saw the reports on social media. So this guy's friends called his mom because they saw him on Twitter in this photo. The first time I heard Jordan Goudreau's name was today, she said when she reached her home in Austin, Texas. Damn, Mom! <laughs> Mom, I'm hungry. Come pick me up. I'm lost in, I'm lost in Venezuela. <laughs> I fucking love this shit. Oh, my God. Goudreau has said he reached an agreement with the U.S.-backed Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido. I just mentioned this guy. I just mentioned Juan Guaido to overthrow Maduro, which Guaido has denied. Of course, he's going to deny it. We all know. We all know that the person who's orchestrating is going to try to deny it. I mean, how long until Guaido's calling for uh, for, for for fucking help? <sighs> oh, keep in mind. Keep in mind. Um, this is just a little side note, but fucking uh. Who was it? I think it was Nancy Pelosi and Elizabeth Warren. A whole bunch of people, uh, not Bernie, by the way, Joe Biden, were all fucking clapping for fucking Juan Guaido. The 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 complete fraud uh, attempt at a coup that we're that we've installed in Venezuela. Yeah, clap, clap for American imperialism for vicious, idiotic interventionalism. Yeah, okay, so they tried with two men to catch Maduro. Actually, that's the thing. These are only the two that were, like, immediately identified and also had their American passports on them. So the focus is, the, the story has fixated on them. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, um, there were a lot more people involved than just uh, these two. It was like a proper, um, you know, there was a proper attempt. I mean, a proper attempt. They had a whole bunch of highly trained security guys um, going to go in and they were going to meet up with Juan Guaido and his dudes and they were going to teach them how to fight and help them find guns and shit. And then they were going to try to storm the palace or the palace, try to storm the capital and take, uh, and, and take, uh, Juan Guaido or not Juan Guaido, t take, um, Maduro. Sorry. I'm stumbling over my words this morning. Um, yeah. The opposition leader said he had nothing to do with Sunday's raid. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's like getting caught with like the bill, like a, with like, like a receipt in your hand for like one nuclear bomb and then being like, oh, I don't know about this. It's my friend. My friend just gave me his receipt for a nuclear bomb. They were running dangerously low on fuel, Goudreau said. If they had gone on to landfall, fall, they would have gone to a safe house. So this is exactly where we were talking about. They were fucking running out of shit. They didn't have enough fuel to get to where they were supposed to go because they never got their rendezvous and they weren't fucking paid, which is insane and hilarious. Um, let's see. Venezuelan state TV showed several Im images of several unidentified men handcuffed and lying prone in a street. One clip showed authorities handling a shirtless man in handcuffs. He was later identified as National Guardsman Captain Antonio Sequia, who participated in a barracks revolt against Maduro a year ago. Goudreau said Sequia... Sequia was a commander working with him in the recent days on the ground in Venezuela. Maduro ally and, and Attorney General Tarek William Saab said in total they've arrested 114 people suspect, 
uh, suspected in the attempted attack, and they are on the hunt of 92 others. They are going to completely find all of these people. Every single one of these mercs will squeal. Every single last one of them is going to end up squealing. See, that's the thing. This is that this is that thing where if you get careless, if you are trying to like um architect a, like a like a like an imperial pressure around the world, but you're so careless that you don't fucking pay your own mercenaries, this is the shit that you get. And we love to see it. We fucking love to see it. Yeah, why exactly? Exactly exactly retcon. Why the fuck it, it's Tropic Thunder. Yeah, this is like fucking Tropic Thunder. It's like, it's just a constant, like, like they go in and immediately the, like, the, like, director steps on a landmine and just dies. And they're like, ah, and they just scream and all start running in different directions. Every, si yeah, it, exactly A-S-D-F-G-H-J-K-I-L-L. This story does get more and more wild. And I can't, I can't wait because guess what? We're going to get to follow this bullshit for the next two weeks as we find out just how bad and stupid it is. I'd be willing to bet there was like 15 other groups of people exactly like this. All of them probably like starving right now who are seeing this and going, oh, we're so fucked. And all of them are just going to go, oh, we're out of here. Oh, what are we screaming about right now, Windleby? Windleby, we're screaming about uh, the funniest shit I've seen in Amer in like the news in, in months. America like slipping, like I don't even know how to describe it. America stepping on like intentionally stepping on a banana peel and then slipping and cracking their skull open with everybody watching. Yeah, yeah, no. Oh, the people who are screaming is all of the mercenaries. Um there are they're saying they're saying here that in total they've already arrested 114 people in, suspected in the attempted attack. The attempted attack, by the way, um when they say attempted attack, there wasn't even an attempted attack. They were just hoping to get to their safe house because they were out of boat fuel. They were going to have to abandon their boats, and that's why they got caught. Yeah, it's the Venezuela shit. This shit is crazy. Here, oops, I should probably, I should probably, here, I should probably do this so we can see chat. Um, What a terrible attack. Oh, it, it, it's, it's like, it's funny because they had the plan but they failed so early on in the plan that it has just resulted in, oh, like, you guys didn't even get off the ground. It's like, it's like if somebody, like, imagine if you got in a fight with somebody and they were, they, like, went to pick up a bat that was right next to them. They had, like, a fucking bat and you're like, oh, shit, I'm gonna get fucked because this guy's got a bat. And then the first thing they do is they reach past the bat and, like, put their hand in a blender and they go, ah, and their arm just gets immediately blended up. And you're just like... Well, that happened because that's basically what just happened. Like, I can't even imagine being Maduro right now and going like, wait, like we I've been like squaring up to face off against the, the greatest global power. And, and 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 this is the best they've got. Oof. Oof. Yeah, we have our own Venezuela. Yeah, we have our own Venezuela argument. This is actually I mean, this is like a gift from heaven to me. This is like. Finally, a good, finally, some good fucking food. That sort of thing. This is me right now. I've been like, oh. <laughs> yes, this is the episode of King of the Hill where Cotton tries to kill, wants to kill Fidel Castro. It's the same shit. It, it, it literally, did, hold up. Where's the picture? Where's the fucking picture? I got to show you. Recon, you're going to love this fucking picture. Look at this shit. Hold on. Where's the picture? This is it. It is three men in a boat. Look, this is the video of them getting arrested. They got caught by fishermen. This is them. This is the first wave of the guys who were caught. They they got caught. Some people saw them and they were like, hey, 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 get the police over here. They pick up their phones, call the police, and these guys are just like, oh shit. And it's just a bunch of fucking schlubby fat dudes in a boat. Three old men in a boat. Literally a King of the Hill episode. Yes, we do. Um, we've been reading on that a little bit. Um, this is the ones. I'll, I'll go back over it real quick because it's funny as fuck. Um... We, so they've caught a whole bunch of people. The people that like were most relevant were two um, U.S. soldiers, Luke Denman and Aaron Aaron Barry, um, and then they they like said, "Hey, our contact is Jordan Goudreau, and Jordan Goudreau is like uh, he works for this um, Silver Corp." And then he was like, "Oh yeah," um, he realized, "Oh we're fucked," and so he's just like, "Yeah, we were doing that uh, at the behest of the of the government." So yeah, we, we we know quite a lot about the people who were caught, and so does uh, everyone in the world. 
every single person. Like, I mean, again, they literally have pictures of their IDs right here. They were carrying their IDs. These are real IDs. These have been fucking verified by other journalists. They have a fucking VA insurance card on them. These are literally just, just imagine the annoying guy on your family, like, that, that posts on every post of your family's Facebook. Like when you go on Facebook and you see that one annoying guy who's always like doing Trump shit in the comments of your family's like family posts of like, hey, we got together for Christmas dinner. And he's like, Trump 2020. That guy, that's these people. They're like, oh yeah, I got to make sure I have all my cards so I can get some booze uh, while, I'm, while I'm doing a coup in Venezuela. Fucking literal LARPing idiots. Yes, they were under orders. Yep. Uh, Under the Thunder. Been wanting to watch King of the Hill. Is it based or cringe? It's based. Cr no joke. I actually like King of the Hill. I actually think it's fucking funny. Yes, some of the off jokes, much like The Simpsons, some of the off jokes have like not aged well, but the actual core of the show is fucking really good. And it's also absolutely hilarious. Like one of the shows that I like, it, it, it's like one of those shows that's become like a, a mind, like a piece of my brain, like kind of like SpongeBob where there's almost always a King of the Hill moment where I'm like, oh my God, like I, like this reminds me of some shit they made fun of in King of the Hill. It's way too real to be parody. Oh, there's an episode of King of the Hill, um, where they go to a mega church and it's fucking exactly like what I was talking about in my mega church video. It's so, so good. Yeah, 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 absolutely. King of the Hill has aged well overall. Um, yes, there are a few jokes that don't hold up well, um, but it is really fucking good. Yeah, yep, yep, Fawn agrees. Yep, it's fucking good as shit. Um, got me some Coke. Yeah, yeah. My, my girlfriend lives in um, an area of Texas that is identical to Arlen, Texas. Looks like minus the like nice lawns because it's a little bit more desert fucking looks identical to Arlen, Texas down to the little, the fucking alleyway out back where they drink the beer and shit. Same shit. Identical. It's amazing. But yeah, these motherfuckers had their IDs on them. They had like their international, they had their fucking passport IDs. They had their fucking VA IDs. They had their local IDs. Unbelievable. Totally, total fucking fuck up. Yeah, look at this. Listen to this. I've tried to engage everybody I know at every level. This is Goudreau, the guy who's like who's like their contact. Um, nobody is returning my calls. It's a nightmare. This is how it goes. Everybody, when you're running fucking criminal shit, every, nobody's going to fucking look out for each other. Of course, they're all going to either squeal or run and hide immediately. Of course. These guys are so fucked. Yeah, I like some things about Texas. Actually, and keep in mind that um, Texas isn't actually as conservative as people say it is. Certain areas of Texas are really conservative, but there's actually an enormous um, non-conservative population of Texas. But Texas is gerrymandered to hell. It is gerrymandered to fucking hell. And so as a result, the conservatives control the government regardless of the fact that the population is actually um, much less conservative than they say. Yep, that's true. Um, and some people are saying that um, because of how much, uh, how many people are moving to Texas um, from, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, Gynotype says, my hometown is King of the Hill. Yep, that's my girlfriend. Yeah, yep, it is. It is, it is King of the Hill. Um, yeah, why would Mercs need legit passports? You would think so, but keep in mind that uh, you would think that's, you would think they would have that operation, but keep in mind, nothing is working right now. They're, everybody is taking shortcuts and they're all just, it's, it's panic. Uh, people have described the situation in the White House like a fire sale. Like, you know, the joke, like, the building's on fire, so we're selling everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fawn, Fawn and Gynotype are my two girlfriends. Um, but Fawn is not from Texas. Yeah. Rednecks make, rednecks make great comrades. No joke. You are not fucking kidding. Uh, workers make great com comrades. If you, like, uh... I, you know, I've worked a lot of fucking different jobs in my life and not going to lie. People are way less. The average person is much less conservative than you probably think they are. Um, they probably have some like problematic conservative ideas, um, often, which are sort of the, the product of, um, the product of like the fact that our entire media apparatus is devoted to manufacturing consent is devoted to selling you war and shit. 
um, and making it feel like it's okay because it's justified. Um, of course, people are going to pick up conservative opinions. But yeah, a lot of people are really just, they're not conservatives. They really don't have that sort of hate inside of them. Um, yep. Let's see if there's anything else in here that I wanted to touch, touch on. Let's see. Oh yeah, here you go. An AP investigation published on Friday. So this, this part already got exposed. This was, this got exposed days ago. The AP investigation published on Friday found that Goudreau had been working with retired a retired Ar Venezuelan army general who now faces U.S. Narcot narcotics charges to train dozens of deserters from Venezuela's security forces at secret camps inside neighboring Colombia. The goal was to mount a cross-border raid that would end Maduro's end in Maduro's arrest. Oh. And he said by telephone earlier Monday that 52 other fighters had infiltrated Venezuelan territory and were the first, and were in the first stage of a mission to recruit members of the security forces. The, we've exposed an entire coup attempt that's completely headless. This makes black. <laughs> this makes Blackwater look like the most competent people you could possibly imagine. You would think. You would think. But see, that's the thing. Um, we've. As an, as an empire, quote-unquote, the United States has begun to rest on its laurels. It's forgotten that you actually have to uh, wield power, that you can't just throw money at everything. And by that, I mean, I don't think that that's a conscious thing at all. I think it's the fact that we have Donald Trump in the office, and the way that he does business is like an organized crime boss. He he does favors, and, and there's nothing really coherent. He's just wrestling by the moment to try and get the most money and power that he can in any given second. This is what I was talking about. He doesn't want a fucking war. He doesn't want to fucking deal with a pandemic. He wants to be catty and punish people he doesn't like and reward friends with money like he did when he was a business guy, when he was a New York real estate asshole, when he was a steak salesman. He wants to keep being the steak salesman, but he wants to have the prestige of presidency. Well, there is no prestige of presidency anymore, so well, not that there really was much to begin with. <laughs> 